If we can have your attention, please. We will get started with our program so we can be respectful of your time this evening. Of course, uh, go ahead and finish up if you need to continue eating. And uh, thank you to the Hotel Mead staff. Um, and they'll, we'll allow them to do their business as well. But let's get started. Hope you enjoyed your dinner. This evening's program will begin with introductions. And we ask that you please hold your applause until the end. We're going to start with the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce staff. The president is Angel Whitehead. The vice president, Krista Kuhn. Our events and marketing director is Hannah Quick. The engagement director is Promise Bakken. The office manager is Jessica Fluellen. And the office assistant is Christine Halverson. Now you can applaud. As many of you know, an organization such as a chamber cannot thrive without its volunteers. And these volunteers are the heart and soul of the heart of Wisconsin. We'd like to acknowledge our chamber ambassador group. If they can please stand. Thank you for all that you do. I was going to say, notice that they uh, all hang together, but the seating was arranged, wasn't it? So, all right. Uh, at this time, we'd like to introduce the 2021 Board of Directors. Please stand up to be recognized. Phil Hartley from Quality Plus Printing, who's our chairperson. Okay, Phil's an exception, but you can hold your applause. All right. <laughs> Uh, the vice chair is Craig Bernstein from Mid-State Technical College. The treasurer is Jill Steckbauer from Mid-State Technical College Foundation. And the governance chair is Alex Hewitt from Nash Law. Our board of directors includes Jill Dillon from Marshfield Clinic, Janine Malcolm from Mary Kay Cosmetics, Lisa Skiba from Aspirus, Jamie Giebert from the town of Rome, Patrick Gatterman from Northward Pedal and Paddle, Craig Broeren from Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools, and Craig Tim from Victor Communications, LLC. We have two outgoing members, Alex Hewitt and Jill Steckbauer. Jill and Alex, thank you for the past six years of service. You've both been very involved, the board members, supporting change, growth, and dedicating time to further the heart of Wisconsin's mission, strengthening the economy and enhancing quality of place. Alex and Jill, would you please come up to receive your recognition? We would also like to welcome two new incoming board members, Matt Edwards from Paper City Savings and Tori Nanstead from Nash Law Group. Let's welcome them with a round of applause. Please. All right, it's now with great pleasure that I get to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening, Katie Leinenkugel. Katie is a sixth generation member of the Leinenkugel family and daughter of current brewery president, Dick Leinenkugel. Katie joined Molson Coors in 2018 after a career as a first grade teacher and then principal of an elementary school in Dallas, Texas. Katie is a distributor sales executive working in the central Wisconsin territory and covers four distributors from Stevens Point to Eagle River. And while no longer working only on Line and Kugels, Katie still oversees the partnership with Line and Kugels and brand ambassador Christian Yelich. When not around beer, you can find Katie biking, reading, cooking, or playing with her two nephews, an Australian shepherd named Clifford and a French bulldog named Montgomery. The heart of Wisconsin area is blessed to have Katie Line and Kugel. Okay, well, I'm a little shorter. <laughs> One moment. Okay. 
How's that? Can y'all hear me? OK, hold on. Yeah, but this falling. OK. OK, hello, everybody. And thank you so much for having me at your 74th annual awards banquet. I'm so happy to be here. I brought my twin sister, Lindsay Line and Kugel, with me today. On our way here, she said, wait, you're the keynote speaker? Why? <laughs> so that gave me a really big confidence boost on the way here. So that's great. I was wondering why I was asked to speak here. 74 years is a long time, but I guess maybe it's because our company's been around 155 years. So maybe I have like something to talk about. At the very least, I hope you're drinking and I hope I can entertain you for at least a little bit. Um, so by the way, at the end of this, I hope to ask a trivia question, just to keep you all a little bit engaged here. And uh, my husband, I don't actually have a husband, but if I did, it'd be Christian Yelich. And he signed a baseball hat, a Lining Kugels baseball hat, and I brought it here tonight. Um, there is one up for the raffle that you can win, but also I'm gonna ask a trivia question and at the end of this, and if you remember the answer, you could win my husband's hat. So just keep that in mind. We'll put that right there. Thank you, Christian. Okay, so just a little bit about me before I dive into our family um, and, our, and our, our company and our history here in Wisconsin. Um, there, there is our logo. She's pretty, isn't she? Uh, okay, so I grew up in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, had a very Wisconsin childhood, did a lot of fishing, I did zero hunting, but um, yeah, Menominee Falls was a wonderful place to be right outside Milwaukee. Uh, I then went to the University of Minnesota, don't hate me, but you know, that reciprocity really pulls you in, you know, I like it. So I studied uh, advertising and I graduated with a degree in advertising, a minor in management, another major in drinking <laughs> out of solo cups. I was 18 in that picture, so it wasn't beer, I promise. Um, and then, you know, during that time, like many college kids, I had an internship, and my internship was in marketing, and I uh, promoted movies for Paramount Pictures. And my first assignment, um, first two assignments when I was uh, in that internship was a documentary about the American education system. Um, called Waiting for Superman. And if you haven't seen it, it is wonderful. It will teach you a lot about education. And then my second project was Jackass 3D. Uh, so I went between, between, you know, handing shots out at bars to teachers who would cry in a movie theater. So that was great. But it did introduce me to the education system. And shortly after that, I applied for and was accepted to Teach for America. Um, and it's a program similar to the Peace Corps that uh, sends you to somewhere in the United States where you teach for two years in an underserved, um, usually inner city school system. Uh, I taught first grade for two years in Dallas, Texas, and then I became the principal of my placement school. During that time, I, this is the joke I always make, is I look great for 50, don't I? Thank you. Um, so during that time, I got my first master's in educational leadership at SMU. And then I get this question a lot too. It's like, why are you now in beer? Well, I kind of always knew I wanted to be back in the family business. So I got my MBA and I got my MBA at UT Hook'em. Um, and then that brought me to Molson Coors and Miller Coors at the time where I, my first project was working on Miller 64. It's a really good beer, you guys. If you haven't tried it, Miller 64, only 64 calories, low carb, low alcohol. You can drink it all day and still have fun. It's good. Um, so anyway, after that, <laughs> I worked on the Lining Kugels brand team for three years. It was a great introduction from going from education into the beer world. Uh, and that brings me to where I am today. I'm a distributor sales executive for Molson Coors. Uh, my territory is right here, um, anywhere from here to uh, Rhinelander, Eagle River. So I'm learning the area. I just moved to Wausau, so I'm really, really enjoying it. Yep, Wausau, it's fun. It's a little different from Milwaukee. Okay, so our family. Uh, Gonna, gonna walk you through the family first, we'll walk you through the business next. Like I said, just keep drinking if you get bored. All right, 
1845, my great, great, great grandpa, Jacob Leinenkugel and his family immigrated over from Meckenheim, Germany. Um, and Jacob's father was an innkeeper and a brewer. So they knew the brewing process well. Jacob and his four brothers would establish breweries across Wisconsin. So they came in through the port of Milwaukee. They would establish breweries in Baraboo and Sauk City and Eau Claire. Uh, his older brother had a brewery in Eau Claire called Eagle Brewing, I think at the time. Jacob worked there for a little bit before he realized, hey, the neighboring town, Chippewa Falls, they don't have a brewery yet. And at the time, you could only take beer as far as it could go uh, in a day by a horse. So he's like, there's a perfect business opportunity there. Speaking of entrepreneurship. So uh, he established his brewery with his uh, best friend, John Miller, not related at all to Frederick Miller, who would then found Miller Brewing Company. But anyway, um, so they established their brewery in 1867 in Chippewa Falls, and it was called the Spring Brewing Company. And they had a built-in source of consumers, and they were the loggers of the area. So these were loggers who were cutting down the trees to build the great cities of the Midwest, like Milwaukee and Chicago. Um, and so they were very thirsty, thirsty lumberjacks. So... Um, they also, a great reason for Triple Falls is they had all the ingredients they needed in the area and they had a great water source and that was the spring, uh, the, the spring, they called it the spring. <laughs> That's it. So, um, so they started their brewery there and later John and Jacobs, um, their partnership would dissolve, but they remain the best of friends. Even today, they're buried next to each other in Triple Falls. So anyway, uh, in 1884, John Miller, that's when he sold his share to Jacob, and Jacob would turn it into the Jacob Lining Kugel Brewing Company. Um, in 1890, that was the year our brew house was built, and the brew house is that, that building right there in the middle. And then he continued to expand the brewery. So he added an ice house and the three-story malt house. That's the building over all the way to the right the bottling house, the cooper shop, and the barns. And so also in this picture are the two family homes right up front, those, those white homes. Those are actually still standing in Chippewa Falls today. They've been moved. People actually still live in them. And we, we warn our tour, uh, people that go on tour, we say like, don't, please don't go knock on the doors. Uh, people still live there, you know? So anyway, uh, this is what it looked like back in 1860 or 1890. Um, and so after Jacob's death in 1899, his son-in-law, Henry Casper, served as president. So Henry Casper, remember that name because he's a descendant of Jacob Leinenkugel. Uh, they, they would later, the Casper family would be heavily involved in the brewery later on. So Matthias Leinenkugel, that's the tallest of the kids he had, he would later become the brewery president in 1907. Susan Lining Kugel Mayer, just Susan Lining Kugel in this picture, because she's like five years old. She's the youngest one there. She would serve as president after her brother Matthias. She's the first and only female brewery president. Maybe someday another one. Um, and then we also have Rosen Williams, who like, I don't think they ever joined the brewery. And Lindsay, what does it feel like to be the not favorite child? You know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So then we have Josephine, that's Jacob's wife, and y'all, she still holds the MVP of the family because she's the one that had to wake up at 4 a.m. and like cook and clean for the 20 brewery workers that lived in the malt house and in the dorms of that area. So MVP goes to Josephine. Um, and so during uh, this whole like first to second generation transition, something happened in the United States in 1919. Anybody know what that was? Oh my God, all is one, prohibition. Prohibition, exactly. Um, and so many breweries simply went out of business, but not Lining Kugels. So this is a, a, a look at our brewery during prohibition, during that era. Um, you can see a gas station was actually added very close to that, um, but that's not necessarily how we stayed in business. Um, we had a lot of different products and they were not alcoholic. Uh, so 
under the guidance of the second generation, so Matthias and Susan, we had a growing market in the non-alcoholic near beer um, category, and it was called Lino. And from everything I've heard about it, it was horrible. Uh, it was not popular. It was a malt beverage, and people just didn't care for it. But one thing that we did have that kind of kept us afloat was KIST, K-I-S-T. It's this advertisement right here. Uh, and they were sodas. So we had lemon lime and root beer and Coca-Cola or whatever it was back then. And uh, in advertisements that we were researching for the 150th anniversary that we just had, we found these advertisements and they said, mix as well with anything. So you can imagine the good old people of Wisconsin were making their own alcohol and they needed some mixers. So that's really how we stayed afloat. <laughs> Uh, and so by the end of Prohibition, Leinenkugels was the largest bottler of soda water in the area. We also had things like chocolate something or another, just things that I probably wouldn't drink today. All right, so we're moving into the third generation. I promise we'll get to the sixth generation. You just got to make sure you're comfortable. I know. So it's a long history. It's a big family. We like to talk. Okay. Uh, prohibition ends. And then we have Henry Casper and Matthias Leinenkugel, and they kick the bucket. So then we have Catherine Leinenkugel and Rose Leinenkugel Casper. <laughs> I know. They, well, they did. They died. Um, and they fought to keep our brewery going by actually mortgaging their houses. So once again, the future is female. Uh, and, and they really kept the brewery going. Um, they used the money and they updated the brewery to keep the brewery's equipment fresh and um, make sure that it was still usable. Uh, and then after Prohibition, our brewery didn't have a brewmaster. So we did the best we could with what we had. It's kind of a motto for life right now, doing the best we can with what we have. Um, and we just kept going. We kept brewing the beers that Jacob had introduced. So at that time, it was Lining Kugel's original and his Bach beer that he brewed. Uh, and that got us through sort of the third generation. Breweries were starting to pop up all over um, and capture a piece of that market. Uh, but then also something we were you know, working on was getting something uh, called refrigeration and refrigeration trucks were big in that third generation. So uh, imagine that being like your claim to fame for our family. Hey, in the third generation, refrigeration. Cool. I hope we can leave something better in the sixth. Anyway, uh, big deal. Those refrigeration trucks. Cool. Okay. So fourth generation, This uh, the fourth generation was run by three families. And these three families were all descendants of Jacob Leinenkugel. So this is the Casper family, the Meyer family, and the Leinenkugel family. Jacob Leinenkugel's great-grandsons, Bill Leinenkugel, who's my grandpa, and then Paul Meyer, and then William Casper, who's in the third generation. They were really in charge of the brewery at the time. Uh, Leinenkugel's during the fourth generation, that's when we started to get out of just Wisconsin. And we were taking the beers we knew the best and the beers we brewed the best, Leinenkugel's original and Leinie's Light, we were taking to the big markets of the Midwest, Chicago and Minneapolis. Um, and so uh, Bill and Paul uh, also added to the Leiden Kugel family of beers. Um, brew it, they, they started brewing beers that were appealing to different types of palates. So during the fourth generation is when you saw beers like Honey Vice come, come into play here. Uh, and they could start advertising to a wide variety of people. So I know I'm going to go on a tangent on this picture, but bear with me, you guys. It's so good. Do I have any true crime fans out there? True crime podcast, but that's it. You guys don't watch Dateline 2020? Nothing? I saw like four. Okay. I'll get, well, you'll be a true crime fan by the end of this. I don't know. Stick around. You'll see. All right. So listen, this picture, <laughs> this picture was from 1967, 100 years into our brewing existence. The guy that's not looking at the camera in the middle, that is Carl Leinenkugel. We lovingly refer to Carl as Uncle Carl. Um, and he's my grandpa's brother, so he's definitely not my uncle. But 
In the family, we call him Uncle Carl. He would later be murdered by his third wife in Hawaii. Yeah. Apparently, nobody liked her. They all liked his second wife, but then she died and he married another. Anyway, um, I'm a fan of true crime. <laughs> Obviously, I really stick to that story. So anyway, uh, Uncle Carl, he was uh, vice president at the time. That's probably the legacy he wants to live with is that. So um, that's it. That's it for that picture. That was the only story I had to tell. Let's move on. <laughs> Okay, so when my grandpa took over as president, uh, he had come back from World War II. He was in the Marine Corps, big Marine Corps family, Semper Fi. Thank you all. Um, and he comes back and he takes over as president and he really has this entrepreneurial mindset and you know, really starts thinking about how can we expand the brewery? So outside of just going to the bigger cities like Minneapolis and Chicago, he's like, well, we gotta do some like guerrilla marketing, some advertising. And so he comes up with this hospitality center. And at the time, the hospitality center was like three racks of t-shirts. I remember it because we used to just hide in the racks of t-shirts. That's it, it was fun for us. But he always said, a t-shirt is free advertising. They buy the t-shirt from you and then they're wearing, they're a billboard, so that's great. He also said, the more people you meet, the more beer you will sell. I hope I'm still gonna be able to sell beer to you all after this, so just, I, I hope so. If, if you ever meet my dad, just lie and tell him I did good. Okay, so also during this time, we started with brewery tours and uh, our Aunt Kate was the very first brewery tour, or tour guide, and our dad was a tour guide and I became a tour guide at one point in my life, so uh, I guess that's one way to make sure you stick around in the family business is be a tour guide. Um, I also say that if you want to get a tour these days, get an actual tour guide because a family member is going to tell you all about Uncle Carl. We're not going to talk about the actual tour. So just our tour guides are great. We're not. In 1988, something interesting happened other than I was about to be born. Uh, but. Uh, at the time, my grandpa gets a letter from a small brewery called Miller Brewing Company, and he takes it to the board chair, uh, either Casper or Meyer or both of them, maybe, um, and, he, and he says, I got this letter. It's talking about a joint marketing adventure, and, uh, they, and my grandpa's like, I don't know what to do with this, and they asked him, uh, what was it, Bill Meyer and Bill, they were both Bill? Casper, Meyer and Casper. Were they all three, Bill? That's not right. Anyway, Meyer, Casper. They asked my grandpa, what do you think they want? And my sweet, sweet grandpa, he said, well, I think they want us to buy them. And that was not the case, uh, sweet grandpa. They wanted to buy us. <laughs> so uh, they would. So Miller Brewing Company acquired Lining Kugels in 1989 is when that was made official, the year I was born. Uh, and, and they really kept, you know, part of that whole business deal was keep the family involved. That's what we ask on our end. Um, you know, let our family be involved. Let us, you know, help manage and just tell the story of Lining Kugels because at that point they were 100 plus years in. And so that really brings us to the fifth generation. And the fifth generation we're currently at, and we will be at for the remainder of the year. I don't know how many people saw this news, but my dad, Dick Lining Kugel, uh, is actually retiring at the end of the year, and he will be replaced by my cousin, Tony. Uh, we'll get to Tony in a little bit, but anyway, we're in good hands. So my dad was in the Marine Corps as well. Uh, he came out of his Marine Corps um, experience. He was based in Hawaii. He did not have it hard, okay? Uh, but he came out of that. He started working for the company, and um, and he's still involved today. And then a lot of you, I'm sure, remember, remember Uncle Jake. I hear a lot of stories about Jake all the time. Sounds like he was a pretty fun guy back then. Um, and then, of course, we have Uncle John as well. If you've ever met Uncle John, you would know. He's a very loud loud and kugel that's what we call him um and so in 
Under Jacob's or Jake's uh, presidency in 2003, we opened the doors to the Liney Lodge. So we had the hospitality center. We grew out of it quickly and we wanted a space where our our fans and our drinkers could come and enjoy a beer, but also do a little shopping, also do their tours. And they did this at the Liney Lodge still there today, expanded quite a bit, much larger bar. We have um, a pilot brewery system in there now where we can brew small batches. I could probably talk all day about it, but I won't bore you. Um, and that's, you know, during this, we, we get over 350,000 people uh, just in our, our lodge club. Um, and that's, you know, half of what visits the lodge every day. So, or every day, <laughs> can you imagine every year? Wow. Okay, and so then in 2007, a little idea came about, and we were, you know, at the time, Barry Vice, who remembers Barry Vice, it's still out there, everybody's like, yeah, hell yeah, that's good beer. Uh, Barry Vice, that was our summer seasonal, and they were looking for something else to replace it. They're like, it's been around forever, we're going to make this a year-round beer, we need another summer seasonal. So my dad asked the question, what are the Germans, or German, what are the Germans drinking in the summertime? After some research, they discovered something called a shandy. And a shandy is, you know, historically, traditionally, something that's mixed with like a lemon lime soda or a Coke. Ew, uh, in my opinion, you can drink whatever you want. Um, but it could also be mixed with lemonade. And that's sort of the backstory of it. Franz Kugler, he was a German innkeeper. Uh, and he was, there was a bicycle race, a bunch of people going by his, his bar and they all were thirsty because they were in a bike race and, uh, he ran out of beer quickly and he started mixing it so he could make it last longer. And that's really where the, the story originated. But anyway, so they mix beer with lemonade and you get the shandy and we were the first shandy brought here to the United States. It is still our number one beer by half and, uh, or by by double, I suppose, uh, combined with all the other brands. Um, and we're in all 50 states and Canada. So just a small little success story, but it's definitely what made our brewery blow up. And in 2017, we celebrated our 150th anniversary. So exciting. And we are now on to our 155th anniversary. Um, on to our sixth generation. I, can you not can you not tell my hair is not blonde naturally wow uh, but yeah anyway sixth generation we have matt lining kugel he actually works in the brewery he's our environmental and safety manager uh tony buer he is the one that is taking over for my dad he is just as much of a lining kugel as me but if you ever meet him feel free to call him liney's light because that is what we have been lovingly referring to him as uh, we are in great hands with him he is super smart um, and he's been in sales and marketing and field marketing. He really knows what he's doing and he's uh, just really lovely to work with. And then there's me. Um, and so we make up the sixth generation. Now, this I'm just going to fly through the business, but I figured we're at the Chamber of Commerce. You guys probably care a little bit about business. So uh, in, in Wisconsin and, and throughout the, the country, we have a three-tier system. So when we brew beer in Chippewa Falls, we cannot sell directly to a retailer. Um, think like Quick Trip. Can't go straight to Quick Trip. We have to first go through a distributor, a third party. And so our distributor partners are our best friends. They are our best resource, our best partner. Uh, and that's just really how it works today. Of course, there's a lot of different laws now that there's tap rooms and things like that. But we could be here all night and Pat might have to get up to explain some of that. So we'll just we'll skip through that. So in the beer industry, we have what we call on premise and off premise on premise being bars um, and restaurants and airports, things like that. And the off premise is your targets, your uh, grocery stores, things like that. So 89% of our business is off premise. 11% uh, is the on-premise, and we value every single one of those on-premises. Uh, just a little look at our national footprint. We are mostly in the Great Lakes. Um, you know, second would be the Northeast. For some reason, Jersey really loves lineys. Jersey, who knew? But I love it. 
Uh, and then, you know, of course, Central, I came from Texas. We had a pretty big footprint down there in Dallas. So uh, that's just our footprint here. And then this just gives you a look at Summer Shandy versus the rest of our brands. So <laughs> I know we really are majority Summer Shandy these days. Um, but I know you guys already know this in Wisconsin. We have a ton of other wonderful beers. Uh, and this year, you know, we're all about innovation. And under Tony's leadership, I know that we're going to continue to be about innovation. Because when you look at a current cooler door, this is what you see. You see seltzers. And they're all white, right? Or, yeah, whatever. So in order to sort of... <laughs> Listen, I drink seltzer with the best of them. But... I'm trying to make a point here. Anyway, so we're thinking about innovation, right? And just we're wanting to be true to our Germanic roots, but also make things new and interesting so that consumers these days still want to try our beers. So we've got a new lineup of a whole bunch of different beers, um, anything from our Sunshine Light Lager to Chocolate Dunkel. If you didn't have that last winter, you are missing out. Uh, to our newest year round is called Juicy Peach. It's a tart beer, not super sour, but it is absolutely wonderful. Would definitely encourage you all to try that. Um, and so yeah, innovation very much at the core of our business. Okay, so now I'm on to uh, my, my trivia question, which I didn't plan until this very moment. Okay. Um, okay, you guys ready? You wanna win my husband's hat, right? Okay. What are the names of my nephews? No, you can't win, Lindsay. <laughs> it's on my Instagram if you want to do some digging. Okay, I think I need a new question. Do you? No, you can't answer. No, you introduced me. The answers are Clifford and Montgomery. Okay, I'll I'll go on with another one. Um, <laughs> If you're on my Instagram already, make sure you follow me. Um, <laughs> okay, let's go with who would I, oh, Lindsay, come here and help me, or help me see who raises their hand first. Who would I give the MVP to of our family? Who? Way in the back. There's somebody against the wall? There's a hand down now, so. Okay, I'm gonna go with waving the hands here. Josephine! Josephine, winner! <laughs> Christian Yellow Chat goes to you. Um, and that's all for me tonight. I'm happy to answer questions later or whenever, but you guys, thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor to speak with you all tonight um, and have a great rest of the evening. <laughs> the heart of Wisconsin is blessed to have individuals and businesses that are dedicated to ensuring we live in a thriving and prosperous community. We're honored to recognize a number of those individuals, organizations, and businesses tonight. Our first award is the Professional Growth Award. It's sponsored by the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Marshfield, and it's given to an individual who shows community service and leadership while demonstrating outstanding volunteer spirits, all while making a significant impact in our community. I know we forgot a few things during COVID, but let's use our inside voices, okay? Because I want you all to be able to uh, congratulate this year's winner, Allison Hewitt. Allison is a Wisconsin Rapids native and 2008 Assumption High School graduate. Almost immediately, she left for the mountains, skiing, and school in Missoula, Montana. After college graduation, Allison pursued ski instructing in Big Sky, Montana for the next four winter seasons. The other six months of the year, she was in Wisconsin, up north, leading uh, kayaking trips for teenagers and working cranberry harvest with her family at Honestly Cranberry. In 2015, she met Alex and started transitioning to living in Wisconsin year-round. 
And by 2017, it became clear that both Alex and Allison wanted to put down some roots here in central Wisconsin. So after buying a house and getting engaged, Allison started working full-time for Honestly Cranberry. And it didn't take long for Allison to find another home within Current. Current is the Young Professionals Group in Wisconsin Rapids and felt like the perfect place to get involved as Allison was already an avid attender of their many events. Current brings people together and showcases local assets. And Allison says, it's a team effort and I'm thankful to help plan events with some awesome ladies. Allison tells us events are Paddle Fest, Downtown on Tap, and Bingo and Tacos. Her favorite things about Wisconsin Rapids include working and living near her family, the river, the walking and biking trails, the golf courses, and being able to go to a local event or establishment and see familiar faces. Allison and Alex are looking forward to the future, more opportunities to get involved and raising their kids here. They are expecting their first, a girl this summer. <laughs> Call it seasons or chapters, each one is special and leads to the next one and they are here for it all. Congratulations, Allison. Please come up and accept your award. team, present, and past members. Uh, thank you to my husband, Alex, for giving me another reason to move back to Rapids for good. Uh, thank you to my parents for all their love and support, as well as showing me what it's like to be community-minded. Um, it took me a minute to realize how good we all have it around here, but this sure feels like home, so thank you to all of you for that. Next is our Chamber Champion Award. It's sponsored by the City of Wisconsin Rapids, and it recognizes an individual that goes above and beyond to assist and support the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce with excitement and zest. As Multimedia Coordinator for Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, Joe Bachman serves the community by reflecting the very best of Wisconsin Rapids. His department provides as a local media resource to residents and those living in surrounding communities. This includes video submissions from over a dozen volunteers, which puts a focus on local sports, concerts, business, culture, church services, and lifestyle programming. One of the more important aspects of the job is live coverage of most committee, commission, and city council meetings, which can be seen in high definition on Solaris Channel 3 and in standard def on Spectrum 985. Nearby municipalities also submit their own government meetings for air on WRCM, which includes Nakusa, Port Edwards, Grand Rapids, and the town of Rome. Mr. Bachman has also formed a working relationship with Lincoln High School, AV Club, and Zaleski Sports, both in efforts to bring as much high school sports from Lincoln Assumption and Nakusa High Schools into the homes of thousands of viewers. In 2021, Joe brought home awards from Wisconsin Community Media's annual Media Fest, which includes work with the Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater, Wood County, and his work highlighting local businesses. He hopes to bring home more gold with a series he formed with Chamber President Angel Whitehead called Dive Into the Rapids, which highlights local businesses. Please welcome this year's Chamber Champion, Joe Bachman. Um, 
first and foremost, I want to thank my wife, Tana. She's amazing, and she has been a huge support to me this entire time. Um, obviously, thank the city of Wisconsin Rapids, Tyler, Shane, Kyle, Kevin. We have a lot of fantastic city employees that, that help make the city great. Uh, and of course, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. It was a great partner to work with as well. So um, all I got to say really is my job would not be possible without Wisconsin Rapids as a whole and the surrounding communities. So just a big thanks to literally probably everyone in the room um, and all residents from Rapids, Nakusa, Port Edwards, et cetera. So thank you. You got the Community Spirit Award ready, Angel? You too, a good girl. It's sponsored by the Wisconsin Rapids Area Visitors Bureau and Convention Center. The Community Spirit Award is given to groups or individuals who demonstrate outstanding volunteer spirit and make a significant impact in our community. This year's Community Spirit Award is the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings. Over the past eight years, the River Kings have prided themselves on being involved in the community while staying true to Coach Quarter's belief in give more than you receive. The team loves meeting with fans and volunteering at events, including Downtown Grand Affair, Nakusa Giant Pumpkin Fest, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree Charity Gala, Ringing Bells for the Salvation Army, and many more. The River Kings never pass up the opportunity to give back to a community that continues to support them. Throughout the Midwest West Division, the River Kings have enjoyed impressive success on the ice with an over 675 winning percentage. The Wisconsin Rapids community floods to the Southwood County Recreational Center to cheer for the team Friday and Saturday nights, clocking in around 500 fans each night of a home weekend series. They boast one of the highest turnouts in the league. GM and head coach Marty Quarters commented on the outstanding crowd turnouts Wisconsin Rapids gets, saying, The boys rely on the surreal atmosphere that River Kings home rink gives to the young players, and our fans are always behind the River Kings in every scenario. One way the organization is able to connect with fans is the Saturday night skate with the River Kings. After each game, community members and fans can hit the ice for free and chat with players, get autographs and pictures, or even play a little bit of tag with the team. 2021-22 All-Star defenseman and four-year veteran Jordan Steer remembers the fond memories associated with Skate with the River Kings, saying being able to interact with fans after a hard-fought game and uh, show appreciation for their support of us is great. Our fans are what make playing for the River Kings so special. It's great to see the way the kids feel comfortable to come and play with us on the ice after the games. The River Kings have stayed true to their team mantra of building hockey up and down the river. The Heart of Wisconsin community is thankful to have an organization so committed to giving back, being involved, and working hard for those around them. We appreciate you. Please come up and accept your award. First of all, I'd like to thank all the award winners tonight. Um, my players know me, and I'm only allowed two minutes, so if you saw Wedding Crash, it's not a big talk. Um, but first of all, um, you kind of covered everything um, about our, our organization. and Giving more than we receive is something we preach from day one. Our players have bought into that, and it's been um, a welcome to be part of this community, but also to be able to give back and get in return. So, I want to thank Joanne Kaiser for nominating us. I want to thank uh, my wife for always having my back. And I want to thank my players because without them, none of this is possible. I want to share something with you that one of my players sent me just last week. He's um, playing college hockey at Illinois State. 
And he said, the biggest thing I took away from the River Kings was not the hockey skills, but the skills that translate to life, like working hard, being stoic during adversity, and being involved in your community. That's something that's very true to our heart. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your evening. This year's Shining Star Award is sponsored by Encourage. The Shining Star Award is given to an organization that has shown dedication to community service and leadership, along with innovative programs and services to adapt to the changing community needs. The Central Wisconsin Cultural Center is tonight's well-deserved winner of the Shining Star Award. Founded in 1996, Central Wisconsin Cultural Center is a nonprofit which advocates, recognizes, and fosters creative experiences through art classes, exhibits, music, and social gatherings as a vital element of individual and community well being. In late 2019, the center completed a successful capital campaign raising over $300,000 from individuals, businesses, and foundations under a five-week deadline to purchase the former Wood Trust Bank building on A Street. The purchase provided the center with a permanent home after a nomadic 23-year history of renting. The campaign also confirmed that the Southwood County community greatly values, supports, and desires stability for the future of arts and cultural programs. With its own property, the Cultural Center continues to increase its offerings to meet the community's ever-growing demand for creative outlets. Its new highly visible location on A Street has 7,000 square feet remodeled from a bank into a multiple dedicated spaces, a large art classroom, pottery studio, music rooms, exhibit gallery, gift shop, conference room, full kitchen for catering, plenty of parking, and a brand new outdoor patio performance space added in 2021. The facility is also available to rent for meetings, parties, and events. The Cultural Center invites you to view art exhibits, shop, take classes, listen to live music, or schedule a tour. With Central Wisconsin Cultural Center now planning an outdoor art park and green space in 2022, CWCC is fast becoming the shining star place to be for local collaboration, education, live music, and many interesting art and cultural programs. Congratulations, Central Wisconsin Cultural Center. Please come up and accept your award. Hi, everybody. I am so pleased and happy and proud to be here to accept this award on behalf of the Central Wisconsin Cultural Center. My name is Connie tomsky fable and I'm the latest executive director at the center. We have had a lot of changes over the last couple of years, um, but I do want to say right off the top that at the center, we believe in the healing power of the arts. So with the visual arts or the lyrical arts, such as music or poetry or creative writing, if you expose adults and children to those creative opportunities, it studies do show that they are emotionally, mentally, physically healthier. And if we have healthier adults and children, we have healthier communities. So that's one of our aims at the Cultural Center. We have a lot of people to thank. We've been through, as it was reported since 1996, lots of nomadic renting. And now we finally um, have our home. And we have a lot of people to thank for that, and a lot of organizations to thank for that. Uh, first off, the Legacy Foundation and Wood Trust Bank. Uh, we owe a great deal of grat gratitude to them uh, for allowing us to collaborate with them and for allowing us to acquire the space on 8th Street. Um, a big thank you to our board of directors. Um, we have Steve Kipfer, Jim Lucas, Lois Altman, Stephanie Hartman, Allison Brewer, Bruner, sorry, Scott Kellogg, and Jack Watkins. 
And actually tonight we have three former executive directors here with us that I would like to uh, send a big thank you to Stephanie Hartman, who has continued her journey from the Cultural Center to ODC, and I think she's back there somewhere in the corner. But Stephanie was very helpful early on in establishing some systems and, and, and programming techniques for us that we still use today. Um, another uh, executive director, Sylvia Becker, is here. If you'd like to stand up, Sylvia. And Stephanie, if you'd like to stand up. Um, Sylvia Becker uh, was our executive director for, I believe, six years and has a gift of the artistic vision, what is what I call it, the artistic visionary. And still, to this day, we have some very impressive artistic uh, features in our new cultural center, thanks to Sylvia all those years ago. And then finally, Carol Davis, who is not with us due to a prior commitment, was co-executive director with Mary Olson, who is here. Would you like to stand up, Mary? Mary, we owe a big debt of gratitude to Mary. Mary spearheaded the effort um, that was mentioned um, uh, to accelerate a great deal of funding in an extremely short amount of time. And um, it was a little bit before my time, but I'm told that she did it with the greatest grace. And we have these tremendous people who've been in our past, and because of them and our volunteers, who you know keep the wheels moving on the bus without the volunteers, you don't have the wheels or the bus to move. And we also have a great deal of thanks to give to our donors in the community. But beyond that, we have a great future and we're really excited about it. We have added the patio now uh, for live events uh, on the patio. We have a raised stage prepared with full electrical for live music. We have a fire table, we have a serving station. By the end of the summer, we'll have an art park, pergola, and sound buffering from 8th Street. We are really moving forward. We're so excited. We want to bring the arts and expand the arts in our area. And we hope you can come out and visit us. And we thank you all so much. Thanks. Our Homegrown Service Award is sponsored by Crockett Septic. The Homegrown Service Award recognizes a business that is dedicated to customers, community service, and leadership. This year's winner, Champions Auto Wash, is nothing short of that. In 2020, Trisha Ferkey and her husband Phil were both at home due to the pandemic, and while Trisha was fortunate enough to have the ability to work from home, Phil was furloughed when the Kusa Car Wash went up for sale. After much deliberation and weighing their options, they dove right into the world of being business owners. Phil was permanently laid off due to the economic downturn from COVID, so the opportunity felt like a blessing. Trisha and Phil learned quickly that while it was a functioning car wash, it had been around since the late 1990s and needed some work. They spent a few days and nights brainstorming a new name and decided on Champions Auto Wash while sitting in the accountant's office creating their LLC for the very first time. As avid car enthusiast and racing as a family hobby, the Furkies wanted to incorporate that race car feel into their new business. And before they knew it, the colors and the slogan, where the winners go, started to come together. The awnings and vacuum stations were the first updates to be brought to fruition from designs on paper. If you visit Champions Auto Wash, you'll notice those updates. And in addition, a cheerleading mascot of sorts. You just need to drive by and see it for yourself. Trisha and Phil from Champions Auto Wash is excited to bring a service to the community that everyone can benefit from. Please join me in congratulating of Champions Auto Wash on winning the 2021 Homegrown Service of the Year Award. that has helped us develop what we really wanted and my family 
and my mom and dad in heaven, I'm crazy. And thank you, everybody. The Entrepreneur Small Business of the Year Award recognizes a business that has initiated economic growth, community service, and leadership, innovative efforts used to adapt to marketplace change. Starting a business takes passion and dedication. The Entrepreneur Small Business of the Year is sponsored by Wisconsin River Orthopedics, and it's awarded to Loyal Font Market. Yang, uh, Vang and Yur are the owners of a loyal font market. Yur loves elephants, and you would know that if you would have been to their market. <laughs> elephants are known to be loyal animals, which is how they came up with their business name, Loyal Fant Market. They moved to the city of Wisconsin Rapids in 2016 and had to commit to at least 20 to 30 minutes one way for any Asian groceries. So in 2019, they opened their own. Asian markets. Loyal Font Market is an Asian grocery store that sells authentic Asian ingredients and hard to find items that our local grocery stores don't typically carry, bringing more diversity to our community. Loyal Font Market was located on Highway 54 but relocated to A Street South last summer in 2021. At that original location, popular sales items included hot foods such as egg rolls, crab rangoons, Fa and much more. At Loyal Font's new location, you can still purchase their homemade egg rolls frozen, and they soon hope to have a food truck so they can serve all of their homemade hot foods again. Vang and Yur are passionate about giving back to our community in many ways. Yur serves in multiple local leadership roles, encouraging unity and cultural awareness. Loyal Font Market sits on numerous local community roundtables, such as members of organizations such as Wood County Hunger Coalition, the Wood County Cultural Coalition, and Wisconsin Rapids Kiwanis Club. Loyal Font Market also opens their doors as a donation drop-off site for community drives such as Hope for the Homeless, Stuff the Bus, and others. Additionally, the store offers a food donation shelf with free food for anyone in the community to help with the current hunger crisis. Loyal Font Market also supplies backpacks filled with Asian food items in their partnership with the Wisconsin Rapids Family Backpack Program. This program is currently serving 54 Hmong individuals. Vang and Yur continue greatly to our community. They contribute greatly to our community and strive to do more. This year's Entrepreneur Small Business of the Year goes to Yur Vang at Loyal Font Market. memberships that are or the members that are coming to our our store and you know just asking questions like so how do I make a tie or do you have your egg rolls and now now they're asking we love your car ragoons where are they you know um, we don't have them yet but we're really hoping we do um, but most of all I just want to thank my family member table seven wave your hands guys <laughs> their time to help us with this business so that we have a diverse, um, authentic store in our community. And I know that everyone is like, you know, 
I'm sure you guys love Asian food, right? <laughs> so, so we're there. You guys have any questions? If you guys are looking for specific ingredients, we're there. And I just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you to um, Heart of Wisconsin for and whoever nominated us. I don't know, but we're just so thankful. Like this is this is amazing. The phone call I got, I'm like, what? <laughs> Me? Us? Yeah. So I'm so thankful for this community. Thank you. The award for Innovative Business of the Year is sponsored by Wood Trust Bank and Cellcom. And for the first time ever, this award will be given to two organizations, Mid-State Technical College and Aspirus Health for their incredible partnership in creating the Simulation Center. Mid-State Technical College and Aspirus Riverview Hospital began discussions over five years ago to find a solution to address the growing nursing student waitlist in an industry that desperately needed these professionals. Since the number of students admitted to Mid-State's nursing program relies on the number of student clinical seats in local hospitals, the solution rested on a collaborative initiative. As conversations ensued, two new factors emerged. First, the state of Wisconsin implemented a student clinical simulation alternative whereby 50% of nursing program clinical hours could be obtained through high fidelity simulation. And second, the third floor of Aspirus Riverview Hospital was being vacated. Given these two new opportunities, the collaboration envisioned a healthcare simulation center that would not only allow Mid-State to increase nursing student admissions, but also integrate interdisciplinary simulation experiences for all the college's health and EMS programming increasing the depth of experiential learning. Other envisioned uses of a healthcare simulation center included incumbent healthcare worker training and community classes. With the third floor of the hospital now open, a simulation training center within the hospital setting seemed like a perfect solution, offering even more advantages than originally envisioned. Discussions quickly moved to formal presentations, which included elements of renovation, equipment, staffing, sustainability, long-term leasing, and funding. With appropriate Mid-State and Aspirus board approvals, the project made application and was funded by the Legacy Foundation of Wisconsin. This grant award offset some of the renovation equipment and staffing expenses to get the center operational. The center started serving Mid-State Health and EMS students in January 2021. Additional training opportunities for incumbent workers and community education are planned in the future. This project represented an innovative solution based on the collaboration of Aspirus and Mid-State Technical College and supported by the Legacy Foundation. Truly a convergence of three missions blending Aspirus Hospital's mission of healing people, promoting health and strengthening communities, and Mid-State Technical College's mission of transforming lives through teaching and learning. With the Legacy Foundation of Central Wisconsin's mission of improving community well-being, this innovative project will lead to a healthier community. Congratulations, Mid-State Technical College and Aspirus Health. The Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce is thrilled to present you each with this award tonight. tonight because we have so many people that are our friends here at Aspirus, so I want those two individuals to please stand because we could not have done this without Aspirus. So can we give them a hand? And we are so privileged because we have a number of our Mid-State staff, and I am the luckiest girl because we have the most amazing staff. 
And when I think about this award and I think about it being the innovative award, that's really what we have been priding ourselves on at Midstay, where we want to really be a solution-minded organization to really all the needs and all the things that we need to do, we want to be able to respond. And this really was based on needs and coming together to say, how could we make this happen? So it's all about partnerships and relationships. But my Mid-State family, I need for you to stand. We have one of our board members, Rick, please stand with us. I think we got 9, 10, and 11 tonight. So can we give them a round? They're a big group today. Simulation Center. If you're a student, we're hoping that once we're kind of post-COVID, we're gonna we have not even had our open house yet. We want you all to come and see what we've got going on because we do have an array of a number of community things that we want to offer. So please come and see us. But again, Mid State staff, you're amazing, and uh, I know we're just at the cusp of really all what we can do with our Simulation Center. So again, thank you to Legacy. We couldn't have done it without them, and, and the Chamber. Uh, we're so lucky to have you. So lucky to have you. Thank you. The award for Regional Economic Impact of the Year is sponsored by ERCO Worldwide. The recipient of this award must show significant regional growth and expansion of their business or organization demonstrate community service and leadership, and use innovative efforts to adapt to marketplace change. Alliant Energy is the 2021 Regional Impact of the Year Award winner. <laughs> Alliant Energy takes its commitment to building stronger communities seriously. Alliant's Clean Energy Blueprint, a roadmap to developing a cleaner and more reliable future, is one way the company is following its purpose-driven strategy to support customers and build stronger communities. This roadmap guides the company's efforts to enhance the economic and environmental health of the community. Alliant Energy's Wood County Solar Project is a prime example of the path to achieving both. The project will soon be generating clean energy, while today it's creating over 100 construction jobs. Once operational, the project is estimated to provide $600,000 of annual shared revenue for both the town of Saratoga and Wood County. In 2021, Wood County nonprofit organizations received over $41,000 in sponsorships and grants from Alliant Energy and its foundation. An impact grant of $25,000 was received by Focus to support the consolidation of three local hunger relief organizations and Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin received $10,000 for a mobile pantry that serves more than 700 households. This past fall, Alliant Energy volunteers helped package and distribute food to local families in need, as well as collect personal donations for 20 comfort bags for Wood County Social Services. Alliant Energy is honored to serve the heart of Wisconsin community and will continue to help where it is needed while building a cleaner and more reliable future. Congratulations, Alliant Energy. Please come forward and accept your award. Wow, um, thank you. I am so humbled and honored to be here today. I am Amy Kralum. I'm the Director of Customer, Community, and Economic Development for Alliant Energy. And I'd like to say I've got the best job in the world. Um, serving our communities, building uh, strong communities, and serving our customers is what we do. And I'm really excited here to have a couple of my colleagues over there at an exciting table. If you guys wanted to stand for a minute, there's three folks here from Alliant Energy that serve this community on a daily basis. So thank you for being here today. Um, what a cool opportunity to be here, to be honored by the chamber, to sit at a table with business owners here in this community to hear all these wonderful awards today. So thank you. We've been a part of this community for years and years. And uh, through our investments, which they talked about today, we plan to be here for, for a lot longer. So thank you, Chamber. Uh, we're very honored to accept this award tonight.
The Business of the Year Award is sponsored by the Town of Rome, which is awarded for the economic impact on the community, business growth, dedication to customer service, community service and leadership, and innovations to adapt to marketplace change. This year's recipient of the Business of the Year Award goes to Cobblestone Hotel and Suites. <laughs> Cobblestone Hotel and Suites is a resource and driver in our local economy, contributing over a half million dollars in taxes. Active in the community, leadership has served on the board of directors for the Wisconsin Rapids Area Convention and Visitors Bureau for many years. Cobblestone provides the area with lodging accommodations for local guests and out-of-town travelers, whether that be visiting family or friends, to attending River Kings games in the fall and winter, or attending rafter baseball games in the summer. They're a proud partner with Swing Against Cancer and hosting these special guests that come to participate in the benefit. And as many of you know, the Wisconsin State Water Ski Show brings a large number of guests to the area and they keep coming back to stay at Cobblestone. In fact, the hotel consistently sells out a year in advance for the big events. Their motto, Big City Quality Small Town Values, serves as a great reminder of their values. And while there's no place like home, Cobblestone wants every guest that stays to feel like Cobblestone is the next best thing. From the moment they step foot through the main door to the front desk, Cobblestone staff enjoy making everyone feel welcome. They also love seeing guests with four-legged friends when coming to town. Often the first impression of our community, the dedicated staff are consistently friendly, helpful, and resourceful, weathering unpredictable and unprecedented upheaval in their industry, including restriction on travel and gathering during the health pandemic, staff quickly adapted to keep people safe. Their commitment to growth and community truly embodies the spirit of business. Congratulations. Please come up and accept your award. On behalf of Cobblestone Hotels, thank you so much for the Business of the Year Award. Um, without my staff, this award is not possible. Um, we do adhere to small town quality, and we wish you know everyone could come and stay at the hotel, embrace our staff members. They are always there with a smile on their face, and thank you again for the award. The Citizen of the Year Award is sponsored by Mid-State Technical College and recognize someone whose work, community service, and involvement demonstrate what it means to be a good citizen. Mike Weiberg is a lifelong resident of Wood County. He is a graduate of Assumption High School, attended UW-Madison, and graduated from UW-Stevens Point. He was hired at the Wood County Sheriff's Department as a reserve deputy in 1994. He learned to fly locally and was hired at the Wapaka Foundry to fly their jets in 1998. After accepting that position, Mike chose to be a full-time pilot and stay on as reserve deputy with the Sheriff's Department. Now, Mike is the president of the Aquaskiers and the Wood County Rescue Director. Mike has been an aqua skier member since 2014 and serves on the Wisconsin State Water Ski Show Championships Committee. His leadership role includes working with community leaders, vendors, ski teams from around the state, and public safety representatives. Mike not only has the role of president, but he drives the main ski boat. It's powered by three separate 100 horsepower Evinrude motors. He tows the most complex ski acts, having the most skiers on the water at once. Aside from his aqua skier responsibilities, Mike is the director of Wood County Rescue, a volunteer group under the Wood County Sheriff's Department. These volunteers respond to emergencies, primarily around the Wisconsin Rapids area. The Sheriff's Department has counted on them for decades, responding to 
vehicle crashes, house fires, crime scenes, and more. Wood County Rescue is a 24-7 operation and responded to well over 100 emergency calls last year. In addition to emergency responses, Mike schedules weekly training, assigns the rescue truck, and makes sure the public events are covered. This organization is almost self-funded by community support. Tonight, Mike's family will come up and accept this award on his behalf. After a quick video. He did something that's extremely important to our communities. I'm proud of him. I've been here for many years. I thought that the lucky people will get the rest of the members of the Wood County Sheriff's Department. Mike's been part of that program for many, many years. Uh, right now, his position is the rescue director. He's somebody that organizes to make sure that people are having a rescue truck responding to emergencies throughout the South Wood County. He also was the president of Wisconsin Rapids Office Peters, another huge uh, community group in charge of the state water ski show tournament that the communities in York. Um, it's my honor to be up here standing next to Mike. Uh, this is an award that he's deserved for many, many years. So Mike, thank you so much. Well deserved, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, this is a big surprise. Sorry I couldn't be here tonight also. Uh, I know that my family is gonna be here. Um, this is a huge surprise. I did not uh, anticipate getting this award. Uh, it started out 25, over 25 years ago as a resume builder, and it ended up being like a second career. Um, and it's just not about me. Uh, I, there's people that have run this group uh, years ahead of me. Um, I, work, I work with great people, and I think people of the future can do the same thing. So uh, I'd like to accept this award, um, this award uh, for our group and also for all its members. I'd also like to thank the families of the people that have been members of our group because um, without them, we won't be able to do this. Uh, thank you very much. And you might be shocked to know that Mike's family is going to come up and accept this award on his behalf. To introduce our final award of the evening, Ambassador of the Year, please welcome to the stage Ambassador Chair Jerry Babiak. So uh, before I was going to announce this award, I wasn't told that there was going to be one person announcing all the awards after this. So uh, they told me kind of like, oh, you're special. <laughs> so uh, I apologize for me having to fill in for Mark here and uh, sorry for your loss. <laughs> so I'm the ambassador chair. I was voted in by my peers for whatever that means, no big deal. <laughs> so the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Ambassadors serves as an avenue for membership growth, for uh, retention and business engagement. The Ambassador of the Year is voted on by the ambassadors who are part of the group, kind of the people who have been there through the year and the Ambassador of the Year is this year's recipient. They're a shining example of true dedication and commitment to our chamber. The 2021 Ambassador of the Year is Larry Schmick. <clears throat> Larry is the former president of the uh, president and chief executive officer of Key Savings Bank. After more than 40 years with the business, Larry has been retired 
he's enjoyed spending time with his family, spending time with his grandchildren, and also spending time not dealing with the ambassadors. <laughs> the only thing Larry loves more than his family and his community is the pie over at West River Cafe. Uh, Larry's made that very clear. Larry also does have a very significant and deep-rooted commitment to his community here. Larry has a long history of community involvement. He's been a member of Central Wisconsin Home Builders Association. He's been the treasurer in that, in that role. Larry's also been a member of the Central Wisconsin Realtors Association. Larry's a charter member of the Wisconsin Rappers Wisconsin Rapids Sunrise Rotary and served in a number of roles while in that position. The Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce is very grateful for what Larry has done. Larry continues to and will be a member of that through the future and today. Uh, the thing Larry loves more, like I said, than his family is pie. <laughs> If you do talk to Larry for more than five minutes, he'll talk about his cabin. He'll talk about going and clearing out that cabin and spending time with his family. Larry is retired. It's something that Larry loves more than anything. Um, Larry does a great job of, and if you look at Larry, he's wearing his maroon jacket today. That's something that obviously I lack. Um, as the ambassador chair, I hope one day to be as great as Larry. I probably won't reach that level, but um, because of Larry's commitment, Larry's dedication to the community, Larry just continuing to be Larry, he is the ambassador of the year, something that nobody else can take away from him. We all hope one day to be like Larry. So uh, ambassador of the year, again, Larry Schmick. Well, after, after all that, I sure don't have to say anything. I mean, uh, Jerry, Jerry is really something. That's for sure. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I honestly feel that several of the newer ambassadors have done the heavy lifting and, uh, for the ambassador group. And uh, I, I really feel they would be uh, more deserving of this than, than myself. That doesn't mean that I definitely appreciate it. So thank you very much for that. And thank you, Key Savings Bank, for sponsoring this award. <laughs> Please welcome back to the stage, Phil Hartley. Been a long evening. Everybody up. Everybody up. Let's go. Stand up. Angel, you got your cell phone? Come on over. Come on over. 74th annual. We need to take a big selfie. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody, put your hands up. Ready? Oh, ready? There we go. There we go. Thank you. Okay, everybody down. Thanks, everyone. I know in the process of a long evening, it's easy to sit there and let your legs go to sleep, so we want to make sure everybody can still move by the end of the night here, all right? So it's always good to start off a, a speech with an icebreaker. So here we go. Titanic. Oh, uh, that's not a very good icebreaker. You're right. Did you get it, Mark? I did. Yeah, it took a while. So anyway, two years ago, uh, when I became president, I know Angel was looking for someone, and she went out and found the most intelligent person she could ask, and, and they turned her down. <laughs> then she went out and found the most creative person she could ask to be president, and that person turned her down. And then she went out for the best looking person she could find, and that person turned her down. And then she came to me. <laughs> and after turning her down three times, I didn't have the, the heart to do it again. So I became president. 
<laughs> I used that one at my daughter's wedding this summer, so you know, it's a reason. So anyway, I, I want to thank uh, for two years of being president of the, the wonderful board uh, that I worked with, Jill, Jill, Lisa, uh, Jamie, Patrick, Alex, Janine, Craig, Craig, a little bit of a recurrence there, and our new members, Tori and Matt. It's an amazing group of talented people who invest their time in the chamber due to the passion that they have for our community and its businesses. I thank all of you for your leadership. It's been a privilege to be president on the same board as you. How about a round of applause for that group, please? Uh, the chamber staff is amazing. Angel over there is intelligent, insightful, a great asset to our community, a great leader, and she continues to grow. Uh, Krista, obviously if you sit with Krista for five minutes, you'll know everything about our community. And that's not only because she can talk faster than anybody in this world could ever dream of, right? but it's also because of the love of her community and the, and the time and the talent that she gives back day after day after day. Uh, new people, Hannah joined this year. Uh, what great soul inside that body Hannah has. Kindness, energy, positive attitude. She brings it all to the table when she works for the chamber. It's appreciated. Jessica's out there. Uh, what a rock star. She came in and helped the chamber in their office. You know, cleaned up a bunch of things. It's so hard working. We're so blessed to have her. And two new people are just learning to meet. Uh, first is Promise. I mean, with that name, how can we go wrong? Uh, we hired that great name, Promise, uh, hearing great things about her. And Christine, who's in the front office now, greeting people and being helping to be a face for the chamber. Thank you both. Again, a round of applause for that group. Uh, you know, they, they are our customer service, and we are their customers, right? We're so lucky for that. Uh, to quote, uh, quote the late great philosopher Jerry Garcia, what a long, strange trip it's been, right, over the last couple of years. Uh, last couple of years have been a huge transition for our, our community, our businesses, and our chamber. I know for me personally, uh, it's been kind of crazy. I lost my job at the mill, which I had for many years. I uh, worked for a few local companies before this year purchasing a business with my wife, Annie. Uh, that business is Quality Plus Printing, 3515 8th Street South, Wisconsin Rapids. <laughs> Telephone 715. 423-7440. <laughs> I see a lot of business owners here who trade business cards. We print those. <laughs> Just saying. Along with a lot of items, so keep it up, right? Chamber has strained, uh, stayed strong throughout the last two years due to its dedication to our businesses. Instead of reducing programs and being pessimistic and hiding in the corner, uh, the chamber came out and fighting, right? And stepped up and offered new and improved programs, uh, events and opportunities to help our businesses and citizens get through the last couple of years that were tough on all of us. Over the years, I've heard some businesses say, I don't have time to join the chamber, or I don't see enough value. Uh, the contacts, the knowledge, the exposure you gain from being a chamber investor is way more than your investment could ever be. Almost every opportunity I've had in my life has not come from my resume. Okay, it's come from getting involved and working to try to help others. My job at the mill came from meeting the mill manager at a chamber event. Okay? Unfortunately, he was fired two weeks later. <laughs> but I got to keep my job, so it was all good. Right? Without Angel's counsel and Crystal's, uh, Crystal's pep talks, I, I doubt that I would have purchased Quality Plus Printing. Uh, I quickly became, when I bought the business, a member of the chamber. And the referrals I received just in the last couple months from being a member has been way more than my membership costs. Chamber membership is what you make of it. Take the time to read the thousands of emails. No, I'm just kidding. Probably, just probably hundreds. I mean, you know, not thousands, right? Attend events and seminars. Encourage other businesses to join in our community. Your membership makes your business stronger, and it makes our community stronger, OK? It's well worth your time and effort. To quote Maya Angelou, one of my favorite people to quote, when you do nothing, you feel overwhelmed and powerless. But when you get involved, your sense of hope and accomplishment comes from knowing you are working to make things better. Okay? Thanks for being involved, all of you. Okay? <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for being an investor in our chamber and our community. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite incoming chairperson, President Craig Bernstein up and uh, to join me at the passing of the gavel. Thanks, Craig.
All right. So I'm the guy that's standing between you and leaving. So I'll try to be quick. Maybe I should lower that a little bit too. There we go. Uh, so first of all, congratulations to all of the winners uh, tonight. Uh, it's just so magical, so special to see everyone here. And thank you for being here. Congratulations. It's been a terrific night. Um, Phil, thank you for your service over the past two years. It's, it hasn't been easy. I know it. This, this whole pandemic, this whole transition we've had to do, um, I'm, I'm glad you were in charge and not me. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Craig Bernstein. Uh, there are three Craigs now on our board of directors. So if you have a problem or an issue, you want to talk to Craig Tim or Craig Borns. If you have a compliment or want to give us some more money, my name is Craig Bernstein. I have the pleasure of serving as the Workforce and Professional Development Director at Mid-State Technical College. And really, this role is terrific. I get to go out and meet so many of you. And if I hadn't had the chance to meet you yet, um, I'm really looking forward to doing so. But it means I also get to hear what's going on in your organizations. And we have some challenges, right? Um, the number one thing right now is workforce. Where are we going to find the people to fill these positions as our baby boomers retire? Um, it, it, we got some challenges ahead, but please know that as your chairman of the board, I'm going to do everything possible to make sure that the chamber is working on these issues for you. Whether that's affordable housing, what we can do for more affordable housing, if that means talent attraction, what can we do to make our place more attractive for more people to move here, uh, whether that's broadband, whether that's childcare. Whatever issues that we can do to address the workforce issue, I promise you that we're going to be trying to work as hard as we can to do that. So um, thank you to my fellow board of directors for giving me this chance to lead you for this next coming year. Uh, thank you for the uh, angel and the, the Heart of Wisconsin staff. Um, you guys really make the show what it is, and, and you do a terrific job at it. Um, no one organization can be everything to everyone. But together, we can uh, continue to advocate on your behalf and to make the heart of Wisconsin area uh, the place that I know it can be as we uphold our mission to strengthen the economy and enhance the quality of place. So with that, as the 74th annual meeting and awards program comes to a close, I'd like to thank our sponsors for tonight's event, our presenting and premier wine sponsor, Urkel Worldwide, and our dinner sponsors, Domtar, Enbridge, Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa, MediaWorks, Paper City Savings, Solaris, Rapids Insurance, a division of Marshfield Insurance, Current Technologies, and Anderson O'Brien. Thank you so much. Now, you're probably wondering, I have this beer caddy on my table. Who gets it? The decorations on your table were sponsored by these generous businesses that we just mentioned. Be sure to look to see which business sponsored your table decor. The Line and Kugel's beer provided in the drink carrier was donated by Holly Rocks, Four Stools Short, and Venus Gentlemen's Club. So, whoever has the birthday next, not past, but coming up next, you get to take home that beer caddy. So thank you to those sponsors for doing that for us. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Ooh, that is nice, Phil. All right, so thank you to Heike O'Day Photography for the great shots she's been getting of tonight's program. She does terrific headshots, so please make sure you see her. Uh, thank you to Wisconsin Rapids Community Media for recording tonight's program. Uh, if you had a good time and you want to relive this event, uh, be sure you check out uh, the, the show on Spectrum Channel 895 and Solaris Channel 3.
It'll also be available on the Wisconsin Rapids Community Media YouTube page. So with that, we'd like to thank the wonderful staff here at Hotel Mead and Conference Center. Give them a round of applause. We appreciate all the work that they've done. We want to thank Mark Skiba for emceeing tonight's event. Thank you, Mark. Make sure you check to see if you want a raffle. The, the drawings is uh, concluded. The uh, numbers that winners are posted, so make sure you take that out. And uh, thank you for the great evening. Let's all continue to strive for growth in the heart of Wisconsin community. And I call uh, to close the 74th annual dinner.